So section 3.4 is titled Comparing Measures of Center, and this kind of summarizes what we've talked about in the last two sections and how we're going to handle working with whether the distribution is skewed or symmetric and if we wanted to make comparisons, what we would do. So let's take a look at um, this first chart here. is just a refresher of what we've already talked about in these last two sections. Remember when we're working with numerical data, we always describe it in terms of three, three main things or three main characteristics. Um, the shape of the distribution, we decide whether it's symmetric or skewed. The center, and if it's symmetric, we're going to use the mean. If it's skewed, we're going to use the median. And then the spread, the horizontal spread. If the distribution is symmetric, we're going to use a standard deviation. If the distribution is skewed, we're going to use the IQR. So your primary goal, choose a pair of measures that is best suited for the data, which always depends on the shape. So you always want to start by looking at a graph and make a, make a, a decision based on what the graph looks like. So again, same thing we just talked about. If it's symmetric, the center, we're going to use the mean. If it's skewed, we're going to use the median. If um, it's symmetric and we're looking for the spread, we're going to use the standard deviation. I'm going to use SD for standard deviation. If it's skewed for spread, we're going to look at the IQR. So take a look at this example. We're looking at the lengths in minutes of 100 songs on an iPhone. And so we've got a distribution here. We've taken a sample of 100 songs, and we've, we've made a histogram based on the lengths of each song in minutes. What shape would you expect the distribution for this to have? Well, we're looking at it, and you can see that the shape is going to be right skewed. It's got a lot in the lower end, and then it kind of trails off. So this is right skewed. Now, even if you hadn't looked at the data, if you think about it, all of the songs that you pull are going to be probably around a certain length, and then after that, they're going to kind of drop off. The number of songs that are, say, 10 minutes or 20 minutes. I can't even think of what song would be 20 minutes. But um, most songs are going to be within a certain number, and then it's going to kind of tail off after that. So then we have a right skewed distribution. What measure should you use for this? So because it's right skewed, we're going to use the median and the IQR, if we're going to describe this distribution. Does this fit with your expectation of the shape? Well, kind of a silly question because I gave you the graph, but... It should make sense if, like I said, you think about it. Most songs are going to be a certain length of around two to three minutes. You've got a small number that might be more, but most are going to be within a two to three minute window. Um, or maybe a better way to say it is most are going to be below about two to three minutes. Identify the mean and the median on the graph. So I think what they're asking you to identify here is what these two, um, these two uh, marks on the graph are. So like you've got this this dashed line, which is either the mean or the median, and you've got this solid line. So these two lines right here is what we're asked to describe. So basically they want you to make a determination about which one do you think is the mean and which one do you think is the median. So th think about it. Take a minute and think about which one you think would be the mean, which one I guess would be higher, the mean or the median. And here's the way you want to think about it. Because the graph is right skewed, these, these songs that are longer in length, these higher, higher length songs, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, even the ones here, these are going to kind of pull up the average or pull up the mean. So the mean is going to be the higher of the two numbers because the graph is right skewed. So the mean is going to be the dashed line or the dotted line. Okay, so this would be the mean. And I can tell you because I have the data in front of me, the mean is 4.9. And then the median is going to be the one that better represents the data. So the median is going to be where 50%, remember what the median is, it's where 50% of the data is below it and 50% of the data is above it. So because you've got so much data clustered in this lower end, the median is going to be the one that better represents the data. So the median, let me see if I can write this here if I've got room, the median is going to be the solid line. And again, because I have the data, I can tell you that the median, and I'm sorry, I'm writing all over this graph. Let me make a little bit of room here. So the median was, or the mean rather, was the uh, dashed line. And then the mean, I'm sorry, ah, I said that wrong. The median, now I'm really confusing you, the median 
is the solid line. And the median, because I know it and I have the data in front of me, you wouldn't know this just by looking at the graph, is about four minutes. And so the median better represents the data because this is a skewed distribution. All right. So in the next section, the mean versus the median. So here's the part you want to remember. So skewed data, so skewed data, and outliers, that's the blank in the next spot. So skewed data and outliers tend to have a large influence on the mean and the standard deviation. So for that reason, we use the median and the IQR because they are resistant to skewed data and outliers. So the median and the IQR are always resistant to any skewness you might have in the graph. Let's take a look at the next example. The board of trustees of a large company earn $250,000, $200,000, and so forth per year, respectively. There are three regional managers for the company who each earn $75,000 per year. So what is the shape of the distribution? So this is a pretty small sample size, so it's hard to tell, I would say, just by looking at the graph. But you'll notice that um, we've got, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then three managers. So we've got a total of nine data points. Of that nine data points, um, six of them earn above $200,000. So for that reason, more of your data is clustered on the right side of the graph. So what would that make the distribution? That would make it left skewed. This is a, a unique one where we're talking about salaries and it's a left skewed graph. Almost always when you look at salaries for an entire company or even a population of some kind, they tend to be right skewed because most people make below a certain amount. But in this example, we're talking about we're comparing a board of trustees to a few managers. So it's less skewed. And if you want to make a note, because most of the ones in this sample are above um, the $200,000 value for their, their salary. Find both the mean and the median by hand. So I've got the numbers in front of me, so I'm going to go ahead and just tell you what it is for the mean. So remember to calculate it by hand. We add up the values that, that we have in the set, and we divide it by the number in the set. So I'm just going to do, um, I'm going to write sum of x sub i divided by 9 because there were 9 in the set. And I'm just going to tell you that the mean here is $191,667. Um, and then it says find the median by hand. So the way we would want to find the median is we would want to list the salaries from smallest to largest. So we're going to have, uh, let's see, we're going to have 75,000. I'm going to leave out the thousands. I'm just going to write the numbers here. So I'm going to go 75, 75, 75. There's my three uh, regional managers. The next highest number it looks like is 200,000. And then the next highest value is 225. And then the next highest value, we've got two that are at 250. 250. Um, and then we've got 275 and 300. I think that's all nine of them. Let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So the median, when it's an even, when it's an odd number of points, you probably learned this before, probably in high school, that if it's an odd number of points or data data values in your set, you can look at the one that's directly in the middle. So we'll have four below it. You may have learned this trick where you we cross off these or whatever, and that's fine. It's pretty rare that I'm going to ask you to do this by hand. But the one that's um, in the middle directly is this 225,000 number. So our median, let me make some space here, our median salary for this data set is going to be um, the 225,000. And if you have an even data set, then you're going to take the two numbers that are in the middle and you're going to average them. Again, we're not going to do a lot of this by hand. We'll use StatCrunch with most of our data sets. So the question goes on to say, which would you use to represent the typical income at this business? The mean or the median, this should say, the median. Which value is smaller? So the median is the 225,000. Actually, that's what these lines are on this graph. One of these is the median and one of these is the mean. 
So what you'll notice this time is the median is the higher number. The median is the 225,000. The mean is the 191,000. So which one better represents the data? Well, it's going to be the median, again, because the graph is skewed, so we know we want to use that. And what I want you to observe is that if we have a left skewed graph, this time the mean is the lower number. So the mean is pulled down this time. Um, and so the mean is going to be lower in a left skewed graph than the median. Whereas opposed to the right skewed graph, the mean was higher. So that's the thing to keep in mind. Let's look at one more example, comparing different distributions. So again, the median is always a safe bet when you're looking at dis different distributions. If you have one distribution that's symmetric and one that's skewed, you want to go with the median. So we're looking at the histograms below for running times for amateur versus Olympic marathon runners. So hopefully you see that the shape of the graph for the amateur runners looks to me like it's left, I'm sorry, not left skewed, right skewed because you've got most of the people in the graph um, below a certain number and then it kind of tails off here. I think one could almost make an argument that this graph is symmetric, but I think because you've got such a, a small number here and most of your data is right here in this region that we can say it's right skewed. Um, this next graph, the one for Olympic, am, um, Olympic athletes, I would say for the same reason, you can argue that it's also uh, right skewed, that you've got um, some people up here on this longer end, but most people are below a certain number. So I would say both are right skewed. So because these graphs are right skewed, or because at least one of them is right skewed, you're going to want to use the median to make your comparisons. Um, and I don't have the numbers in, oh actually yes I do. So the median for the first one is 266. The median for the Olympic runners is 155. I think that would make sense because Olympic runners are probably going to run a much faster race than amateurs. Um, so the median, though, when you have different measurements that you're comparing, the median is always a safe bet to make comparisons.